Hi everyone. Um, I recently got a couple of questions uh, regarding the Hacktoberfest and how to start contributing. So I've decided to do a quick uh, video and walk you through uh, an example project and see uh, what we can do and how we can um, submit our first pull request. So for today's project, I'm using my friend's uh, Sylvain project. Uh, he recently gave a talk at DevFest Toulouse, uh, where he showcased um, like how we can use web media and web audio to build a, um, a fun music uh, project. And for that purpose, he created this project called Live Code in Web Audio Tone.js uh, on GitHub. He recently open sourced it. And um, while actually I was watching his talk uh, live, I've noticed a couple of things uh, that could be improved uh, on, like from the user experience uh, perspective. And I've decided to give it a try live here. So I don't know about his project, but I do know about the editor he's using. So it's, it's the Monaco uh, editor. Um, so yeah, let's do it together. So first thing first is to clone his project. Up, so I'm gonna copy the uh, GitHub URL and just make sure yeah to read. Okay, so basically yeah he has only the README, so I guess everything is here for us to get started. But first of all, as I said, we're gonna clone his project. Um, so on my on my computer, and then let's open it on. VS code right here up like so. Let me put my browser on this side. So how to get started with his project. Um, so here, how to use it. You can head to la, 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 start life within, be patient. Nah. To run locally, run npm, run build, and then run serve. It builds the docs. Okay, so uh, okay, so this if you want to use the um, the editor and live code and environment locally, we want to contribute. We want to develop. Oh, if you want to tweak the live code and environment, uh, uh, run run npm, run surf dev. Okay, so first of all, um, this is a typical node. What I mean, web. JavaScript thing project. So I need to npm install first to get all the dependencies. Um, his license is Apache. So yeah, so I, I guess we can contribute um, easily. There is no restriction. Um, so this is his readme file. Let's see the render it preview. Okay, same thing. Uh, nothing new. Next, so he's asking us to npm run serve dev, right? Yes. Okay, so, oh, so the project is running live on localhost on port 8081 on his readme. He's mentioning 8080, so this might be a typo. Um, so that would be another um, another PR for you to fix, guys. <laughs> All right. Uh, for today, let's focus on um, improving a couple of things on the editor itself. Okay, so it's running, and I said it was on. Okay, click on it. Good, it's 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 running. So, uh, if you if you happen to see his talk uh, as I did, I saw him uh, like yeah uh, moving around the editor and like clicking around and pushing shortcuts on his keyboard to evaluate um, like um, sub blocks of of JavaScript and uh, execute them like separately. 
However, <laughs> he didn't document it. Uh, I don't know what shortcuts he's using. So let's navigate through the code. So yeah, this is the typical SRC folder. We usually find um, yeah, the source code of, of, of the project. Oh, there is an SRC live coding with file name, JavaScript file name, okay. Oh, okay. I think these are the presets because yeah, he showed it on his talk uh, somewhere. Yeah, okay. So these are the same files. Uh, we, we don't care about these files for now. We need to find the the source code of the editor, I guess. The editor JavaScript seems good candidate. Okay, thank you Silv Silva for adding the comments. <laughs> uh, it's really appreciated. All right, so I need to know how to run the blog codes and then I'll explain what we're going to do. Oh, here. Editor add command, Monaco key code enter, control command. What does it do? What's this? Oh, there is an alt. Oh, eval code. Seems interesting. So here we are getting the model. So the model is actually the your 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 file that's been loaded inside Monaco editor. Get value in range. That means that we are going to get um, a sub a sub block or a block of code from like inside the editor. Okay, so this eval. Let's see where is. <coughs> excuse me, where it's called. It is called in the edit. Oh, and it's called here and here. Okay, so let's try it out first. Uh, the shortcut is enter. Control command. So I'm using a Mac, so it should be command. All right. So if I click maybe here, I hit command enter. Oh, yeah, I remember that. So when he did this in his talk, in, you see this this gray area gets evaluated. And moving forward, for instance, here. Oh, that's the same block, okay. Oh, okay, we get it, so it's running. <laughs> All right, so now, as you see, uh, let me try it again and explain things. So here we are evaluating the code, this this block. However, uh, we don't have any feedback. So now uh, I don't know which block um, I just evaluated previously. So. While he was giving his talk, uh, sometimes he forgot which block got executed and then he had to reload the web page, which is not great, you know, when you're doing live coding. Uh, it, it's it's already a stress, <laughs> stressful situation. So let's, uh, what, what I wanted to do here is to probably have some sort of like highlighting on the sidebar, uh, what we call the, the getter, I guess, where we have the uh, line numbers. You know, something that's, shows that this block of code has been evaluated um, successfully, maybe. Okay, so for this, uh, yeah, I happen to know the um, the Monaco editor because we are using it on Xlayer. So when you go to Xlayer, um, Xlayer, by the way, just, yeah, um, it, it, it's, it's a tool that lets you convert your sketch file app, design file apps, you know, Oh, excuse me, design files to uh, code. So here we have a couple of, of uh, presets. For instance, we have this sketch um, design. Then when you hit code generation, we automatically generate a code for you for Java, for, for um, Angular, Vue, React, Web Components, Tensile, and, and, and more. And we are using Monaco Editor. So I'm quite a bit familiar with the API. So here, the thing we're going to do is, first, I'm going to um, create a new branch because we're going to submit a pull request. And um, 
yeah oh, okay I forgot to do something before so before you I mean before you start contributing you start updating the code or um, trying to send your pull request you need to fork the original project what we call the upstream project so here I'm gonna click fork I'm gonna fork it on my personal account um, wait for the process to end and then I'm going I'm going to use this new github URL um, locally so here I'm gonna copy this new URL you see it's now pointing to my personal github account which is a fork of uh, Silva Sylvan's uh, project so here I need to do one thing before I need to change the upstream URL. Well, I mean the origin, the origin URL, because when you when you when you check what is the current GitHub URL, this is the original project, and I don't have permission to permissions to push to his project. So I need to push to my personal project on GitHub, and then from that point, create and send a pull request to Sylvan's project. So in order to change the origin URL, I'm going to use git remote set URL origin and use my uh, personal account URL and then git fetch to get um, all the information locally and then uh, update my local git, uh, git configuration. Yeah, so now we're going to create a new branch because that's considered a good practice before uh, changing any code. So we're gonna use git checkout dash b and uh, give this branch a name. Let's call it editor UX improved. And now, as you can see here, we are now on the uh, on a new um, branch. Okay. So our project is still running perfectly. Okay. So now, uh, what we are gonna do? We are going to start coding. Um, you know, after yeah, fifteen minutes. <laughs> so let's add this uh, small change so we can see which part of the code has been uh, evaluated successfully. And now, uh, I mean, yeah, you need to either be familiar with the project you are working on or take some time to explore all the, all the um, source code and files and yeah, understand how things are um, architectured internal internally if you don't have any documentation or, uh, or um, diagrams, you know, uh, something like that. So here, uh, I'm gonna make a choice. Maybe that's not the right, the perfect one, but I'm gonna add my code inside this eval code function. Uh, okay, so I see here, yeah, when you, remember when you hit command enter, you see this uh, gray highlighting and then disappearing, this flash. So yeah, he's, Silva has, um, he added a comment here, flash selection. So this code is the part that is responsible of highlighting in gray and then disappearing, you know, flashing. So it happened, that, I mean, the, the, the update we're going to make is using, I mean, does use the same API, which is the editor delta decoration uh, API and give it a range. So here, what we're gonna do, um, we're gonna add the uh, the part we want to um, yeah we want to add to improve the the user experience and we only want to, to for instance okay so we, there is there is a success flag over there we're gonna use it if um, excuse me oh if success I mean if the code has been successfully evaluated okay let's add this um, highlighting bar so for that I'm gonna use editor <coughs> um, delta decoration 
and I'm gonna give it a range. So the range we wanna highlight. And then uh, for the options, I'm gonna give it um, lines, where, um, how it's called, uh, okay, yeah, I have it here actually, by the way, um, it's called, okay, this one, lines, decorations, class name, that's the one we want actually. So this is gonna apply a, um, a CSS class name uh, whenever um, we have a successful code. Oh, excuse me. It's gonna apply a CSS class name on this particular range. So let's call it, I don't know, uh, code eval success, maybe something like that. Um, we, we hit command S to save. And yeah, you can see that the, the, the app is reloading because he's using uh, Webpack, dev server, I guess. Yep, that's it. And uh, okay, so this is a CSS class and we need to um, add some CSS properties to it. And I, I don't see any CSS file here. I guess he's using, um, yeah, the index HTML. Okay, I see some CSS here, um, CSS classes he's been using. Um, so for this one, let's say we're using background color of uh, maybe green. Um, hit save, reload. Okay, so let's let's try it out live. Okay, command enter. Oh, see that? It's working. Well, it's it's a bit ugly, but it's working. Okay. All right. Next block. Oh. Yeah, it's definitely working. Let's let's improve the CSS a bit. Um, I'm gonna give it a lighter green color, and probably um, smaller width, and maybe a margin uh, left five pixels. Okay, CSS has been a uh, updated. Let's try. Good. Okay. I guess the width it isn't. Okay, let's inspect. Time for inspection. So as you can see here, that's our code eval success class name. And oh, you see here our width has been over uh, written by the. Um, that's CSS, that, this is how CSS works actually. So um, we can do either like, have like a more stricter uh, CSS selector, maybe uh, let's see if this one is working. I, I don't know my CSS specs, okay. Um, or this is the laziest <laughs> uh, solution is to use the important flag. I'm just gonna just make sure it's it's doing okay. See, so that's a smallish. It has a smallish width, five pixel. Uh, okay, let let's leave it like that and see if Silva is um is happy with that or not or not. Um. Okay, so we now have. That's an error. That's another error. Okay. Um, okay, it's also compiling comments. Funny. Okay, that's working. This one as well. As well. Um, now, just for safety reasons, I like to also uh, think of of the other um, the other side. You know, we have. Okay, let's do things when we have a um, when we have a success results. So what can we do when we have an error? Um, just for safety reasons, let's remove this highlight and process just to indicate to Sylvain that this code has been uh, errored and not compiled anymore. I mean, or yeah, uh, it's not valid anymore. Uh, let's say that like, 
uh, like this. And for for this, okay. So for this, we need to have uh, yes a uh, yeah a global variable like he he did. Let's call it eval eval blocks. So that's that's an array. So when we create this highlighting block, just assign it to the eval block, and then here um, use this editor again, delta decorations, and give it the previous one, and empty it, save. Okay, so uh, yeah, now we need to try again. So it's working. I mean, okay, working again. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, so we need a case where uh, we have an error code. For instance, let's. So, yeah, this one was working before. Yes. Let's take this one here. Okay, you see? So, yeah. This one is not is not being compiled uh, evaluated successfully, so we don't bother adding this highlighting part. Um, yeah. Anyway, um, I'm gonna I'm not going to uh, go uh, into much detail in here. That's just an example. Uh, maybe your project would be different. Um, <clears throat> so now we have changed two files. This is like the editor JavaScript, the editor JS and the HTML where we put the CSS. So now, remember, we are in, an, in, in a different branch. We need to give it a comment. Um, again, when you, when you need to, um, I mean, uh, uh, add a comment message, always check out the original project and see if they have a contributing uh, markdown file or any documentation on how to contribute because they have probably their own uh, set of rules and guidelines, uh, so you need to follow uh, these. Um, uh, I don't see any uh, in Sylvan's project. That, that's fine, that's completely fine. So I'm just gonna, yeah, uh, use my, my, my own <laughs> guidelines, which are uh, the ones we use on, 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 Angular, on the Angular project. So here I changed, um, I, I mean, I added, changed the code but didn't add any breaking change. So um, let's, this would be for me a feature. So that, excuse me, that's um, that's the block for scope. This was the editor because we changed the editor file. And here I'm gonna give uh, a message, um, a clear message. Um, improve the evaluated uh, blocks okay so that's somehow clear to me uh, I don't know if it's clear to Silva but um, to keep it short uh, let's leave it like that hit commit and then I'm gonna push it okay I'm gonna use this the command line for this I'm gonna push it to my origin remember my origin the origin is my personal project and the branch name is the editor UX improved. Yep. So uh, Git told me everything has been pushed and uh, it gave me this um, URL to create my pull request. So I'm gonna open it on Chrome. You see here, it gave me all the files I changed and asking me to give uh, more details if needed. Uh, I'm gonna leave it like that and create a pull request. So this is gonna send my code to Sylvain's project. As you see here, the the project, I mean, the, the, we switched to Sylvain's project. It created one pull request on his um, project. And then um, let's wait for his response. I mean, he could, he could tell me to maybe improve some bits of the code, maybe add test unit tests. So there there was no unit tests in this project, but that's fine. But if there is any uh, things you need to do, uh, 
always remember to read the contribution uh, guide or uh, guidelines for that particular project. Some projects uh, do uh, need a unit test, uh, like in order to uh, approve your pull request, or maybe, um, you know, go through some discussion with the authors in order to have the right implementation or right fix or, or whatever. So that's it for now. Um, uh, that was a bit longer actually, <laughs> but you have the full process here, like from start to finish. Uh, I think I co I've covered like the m most important bits of it. So first of all, identify the project you want to contribute to. So um, this could like the, the, the easy things for you to do is to contribute to projects you already know maybe. Uh, yeah, if if you are talking uh, about code, uh, improving code or adding new features, if a documentation, I, I know lots of great projects that would need um, your help on documentation. So please feel, feel free to help them. Otherwise, for code, uh, make sure to I mean to start with the projects you already know or you're using on a daily basis, and then read their guidelines. If there is any, um, read their readme, the contribution guidelines, any other restrictions, the license also. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, the license should be fine for most projects. <clears throat> and then fork the project onto your uh, GitHub, create a new branch, add your improvements, code, documentation, whatever, push your branch onto your GitHub account and create a pull request from your GitHub account to your the original project and um, yeah wait for it to be merged or maybe the authors again they would ask you for clarification or new small updates or uh, yeah any comments they 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 might need you to uh, to give like more insights about all right so. Uh, that was it. Um, so thank you for uh, following along. And if you have any uh, questions or maybe things you want to know, uh, send me a DM on Twitter. I'll be happy to, to help to answer you. Cheers.